Look, I don't mean to come off as a hater in any way, but I'm just telling it as it is. You know, I've watched KSI box for a while. Basically, I've watched every single fight that he has done, and I've come to the conclusion that this guy sucks at boxing, but there's a little asterisk around it, which I'm going to be talking about later. At the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about why I think KSI's performances are kind of lackluster, and why he's actually better than a lot of us think, but you're going to have to tune into the end of the video after the breakdown. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. If you guys are new to the channel, hit subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Normally, we do UFC content, but of course, I sometimes dip into the YouTube scene so make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're interested in anything boxing MMA related YouTube boxing whatever and I wanted to make this video for a while I also want to do a video on Joe Fournier so if this video does well I will also do a video on Joe Fournier because there's a lot of fights to break down from there that I already have saved that I've just been watching seeing can this guy actually beat KSI is this guy legit we'll talk about it if that video ever does come which I'm sure it will at some point but KSI has a fight May 13th he's gonna be fighting a legit pro boxer 9-0 and and yes while it's true his competition has not been up there the guy does have pretty good fundamentals now my breakdown i'm going to be talking about some stuff that worries me about joe fournier but like i said hit the like button comment and all of that if you guys want to see that but all right ksi i mean he's been boxing for what about five years or so maybe even six and the guy still makes a lot of fundamental errors and i'm going to explain why he's been winning to this point because i will also be giving a lot of compliments to ksi but a lot of this is always going to be negative and i'm going to be breaking down exactly what's up by watching the face temper fight with ksi so without further ado let's just get into this breakdown all right so i believe this was january January 14th, Misfits 004. KSI was supposed to fight Dylan Dan as a southpaw, replace his opponent with Face Temper. And I had picked Face Temper the win. I thought Face Temper was going to be able to use that jab because he is so tall. He's such a different matchup than Dylan Dan is. I thought maybe he'd be able to keep him at the jab, and he does have a little bit of a mixed martial arts background. I thought maybe that would be enough to beat KSI. I was wrong, and I was severely impressed by this performance, especially with the power of KSI, which I'm going to be talking about when we get to the knockout. I mean, one of the things you first got to notice about KSI is a good and bad thing. He definitely feeds off the energy of the crowd. I think that was part of the reason why he didn't want to fight Jake Paul during COVID and have it not in an arena. He definitely takes a lot from the fans, but I also think that's a bad thing, which I'm going to be talking about later on. But you can definitely tell he's hyped up. He walks out to his own music. Here's all of his fans shouting KSI in England. And I honestly think FaZe Temper was more of a challenge than Dylan Dennis would have been, but let's get into this fight. One of the things about KSI, you could even see right away, his mouth is just open. I don't know why this guy breathes with his mouth open. You know, there's a lot of fighters like Jekas Duplessis, if a lot of you guys watch MMA, he fights with his mouth open because he has a nose injury. He can't breathe through his nose and somehow he still manages to fight. And a lot of people interpret this as him being tired. I interpret this as KSI being tired. Not exactly right now, obviously, because the fight didn't even start. But especially in that Logan 2 fight, I thought it was more of just a dog that helped him out in that fight. I thought he seemed really tired. He was throwing a lot of huge overhands, which would just obviously get you tired over the course of six rounds. So one of the things that I think helps KSI is his forward aggression, which obviously I know a lot of us know that's what makes KSI KSI. It's just his forward aggression. He doesn't really carry his confidence, which is something that you got to give him. He's very confident going into the ring he doesn't really seem too nervous he always seems like he knows he did the work and as i always say in my videos there's two things to do to beat somebody that's more experienced than you one be unorthodox and two have power those are two ways to negate skill ksi has both of them in this fight which we're going to talk about which i think makes me think ksi could beat a pro boxer more likely than jake can because jake is very orthodox you know he has the jab he's a kind of a simple boxer ksi has a lot of weapons he's very unorthodox throws weird combinations which i think helps him a lot and that's why honestly i think i'm not saying that i think ksi I would beat Tommy Fury, but I could see KSI beating Tommy Fury rather than Jake Paul. Now, one thing that impressed me about KSI from this performance was his use of the jab. Normally, you know, he's out there, especially in the Swarms and Pineda fight. He just went out there trying to brawl, and I would have rather seen a little bit more skill. I would have rather him gone three rounds with those guys showing proper skill than just seeing him knock them out in the first round. He comes out with the jab trying to put his lead foot on the outside, because if you're fighting a southpaw, if you're a southpaw fighting an orthodox fighter, you want that foot on the outside, because that'll just give you a target right to the face with that right hand. It'll just be a straight line target and mma you could also use this for front kicks and things like that but obviously for boxing you just probably use it for the right hand so ksi does that right away and he was training for this for months he was supposed to fight dylan dana so there's no surprise that this was going to be the shot so ksi is pawing the jab like i said trying to get that foot on the outside and i think ksi's biggest weakness so far we're only 20 seconds in and he's shown in his other fights especially the swarms fight he's not able to cut off the ring very well now i've talked about this in other videos but the best way to cut off the ring is to move side to side there's two ways you know you could either move forward and in that case opponents are just going to slip out on the outside but he could have moved side to side so temper was not able to escape temper in this fight was able to go on the outside which is something that i think joe fournier will definitely take advantage of he needs to be able to cut off the ring even if he's just picking at shots i think ksi is always looking for the knockout but if he's able just to pick his opponents apart i think it would be a lot better especially in this fight but i think there's a way to have a little bit smarter aggression if you're ksi and i think that's something that you should definitely work for when fighting joe fournier preparing for that fight because just moving forward your opponent's easily going to be able 
able to escape just like how Tommy just did here. Now the thing about KSI is that I think a lot of his opponents are scared of him. Like it just seems like that. And I don't know if it's because he hits incredibly hard. I've heard from sparring partners that KSI apparently hits crazy hard, harder than Jake. And I think he does seeing from this fight, he really put temper out. But if I'm Tommy, I'm trying to stick the jab in his face, go forward with it. He's kind of just pawing at him, waiting for KSI to throw the shot. And that's what I think KSI does well. He has his opponents on the back foot because they're like, holy shit, this kid hits hard. And he's not thinking about what to do to set it up. He should have been a little more aggressive with the jab, jab the face of KSI, or at least stayed in the middle. Tommy was always backing up in this fight. And like I said, I think KSI should have done a lot better taking advantage of this, moving side to side rather than just going straight. Now, this is KSI's first use of this like karate stance that he's using now. I know he trains with Michael Venom Page, MVP at Bellator, who has a similar style. So I don't know if that's where he's getting it from. It's kind of like a karate stance. This I think was more used to kind of just put face temper off guard, but I don't suggest he use this in a lot of his fights because I don't think he's very like proficient in this. He could be, I don't know. I'm just saying. KSI in this moment also impressively shows very good distance management. We're only 40 seconds in the fight and he already knows the perfect distance. It doesn't seem like to me Tom can hit him from this distance. So he knows when to properly do this. Now in this department, we haven't seen KSI so much, but this is his big weakness in my opinion. Something that Jake Paul will take advantage of, which I'll explain why in a minute. KSI's left hand is always down. I don't know why this is. Whenever he's throwing the right hand, his hand is all the way down. And Tommy in this moment recognizes it and tries to throw a left hand. And I know there's videos of him having really good head movement I've seen and I was super impressed by that. But if you guys will recall, Jake Paul rocked Tommy Fury in their last fight with a big check hook. Jake Paul has an impressive check hook. Normally people set it up with a right hand to get more momentum on the left hook, but Jake Paul could just throw it naked and be totally fine. It's really powerful still. We saw him throw it against Ben Askren as well. And I feel like this is one of those examples where KSI lets the crowd get to him. He kind of goes forward, kind of forgetting a game plan. He just kind of goes in aggressively. Once again, dropping that left hand, dropping both hands if you look at it here. Literally both hands to the side. All Tempra has to do here is throw a check hook, which like I said, Jake is really good at. Or even a straight left hand or a check right hook. Really any shot would have put down KSI in this moment because he's off balance. You can see one of his feet are off the ground. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about how someone could beat KSI. Like watching this, how I would beat KSI if I were like a pro boxer. Not saying I want to step in there with KSI, but. And I would have liked to see this fight with a longer training camp because Temper has some really good game plans here. Whenever he clinches KSI, you can see he presses him against the rope just to give himself more room just because they know that KSI is an aggressive fighter. And Temper was good at picking up a lot of these shots. Like as you can see here, he lands a few left hands. Just noticing KSI goes in with his hands down and it kind of freezes KSI, but then KSI then comes back at him. But you're not going to be able to take so many of those. Like this is a six round fight, I believe. Tommy's throwing his power hand and if he starts to sit down on those shots, it's not going to be good for KSI because KSI will get knocked down whether he's hurt or not because he's so off balance. Like he could be totally fine. Like we saw Tommy Fury get knocked down and he totally seemed fine. He was just off balance. Same thing's going to happen to KSI here and Tommy Fury is way more of an experienced boxer. So that's where I worry about KSI. I could see him getting easily knocked down. Not necessarily necessarily because he's hurt, but just because he's so off balance and his technique is so off. And one thing I like about KSI that I think a lot of boxers should do is take full advantage of the clinch. Yes, clinching is technically like illegal in boxing, but it still happens. Some referees even allow it to go on for way longer than it really should. KSI will always throw body shots in there because at the end of the day, all the shots are going to count up, especially to the body. He throws them as hard as he can to the body because he knows that they're going to land. And it just kind of wears down his opponents. And especially if this is a six round fight, that's what's going to make the difference here. He takes full advantage of these shots. And I think that's definitely one of his stronger points. So KSI, at this point, he's using that bouncing movement to kind of put his left foot on the outside, kind of moving in and out just so Tommy doesn't expect anything coming, just to get him kind of used to it, saying, hey, KSI is going forward, but he's not throwing anything. So when he, KSI does finally commit, he's not going to expect it, which is exactly what happens. So KSI lands a right hand. That didn't really seem to hurt Tommy so much. It's the left hook that really hurts him. But as you can see here, look, KSI's hand once again is down. If Temper slipped it and hit him with one of his own shots, that would have been bad for him. And it's this perfect left hook, like perfect from KSI. So Something that I like about KSI that he did, which I don't know if this is just because he overcommitted with the right hand or he did this on purpose. He moved his right foot forward as he threw the right hand and then threw the left hook with his back hand. So kind of switching in southpaw and then hitting him with the right hook just to make it that much more powerful, which is why this was so perfect. I was super impressed by this. And that was with the left hand, right? Like that just shows the power of KSI. He has a lot of power, this guy. I think he hits harder than Jake. We saw Jake Paul hit Tyron Woodley hard, but that was a guy with a lot of damage, right? In his career. Jake doesn't knock people out that have had a lot of damage like he did knock out Nate Robinson and yes he didn't have necessarily boxing damage he did have a lot of brain damage or whatever I'd assume over his basketball career probably getting injuries here and there he is an older guy as well so it's easier to knock those guys out he wasn't even able to do that to give but KSI is able to knock face temper out cold a guy that's in his like late 20s that's impressive to me like that is extremely impressive it's hard to knock a guy out that's young we saw that with the Tommy Fury fight the shots were just not able to land as good for Jake I think KSI definitely hits harder than Jake in my opinion and call me crazy I know a lot of people might I think he's the hardest hitting 
boxer in this whole like YouTube scene. Tom Tommy just could not get up. He tried to get up, he fell, and that was it. All right, but that's my breakdown. First of all, I want to talk about this. What are some good things and bad things about KSI? And then I'm going to be talking about why I think KSI doesn't do so well. First thing that he does well, like I said, he's very unorthodox with that bouncing style, with that super aggression, that confidence. It kind of throws off opponents, which is something that I want to see with Joe Fournier. We haven't really seen him pressed. How well can he do? He definitely has to work on his movement in the ring, in my opinion. And KSI has to do the same thing. He has to be able to cut off Joe Fournier and get his shots going. Because Joe Fournier will definitely be able to just circle out and be out in the open again. And inevitably, that'll gas out KSI if he's constantly chasing Joe Fournier. And like I said, his power, I mean, it's just a God-given power. I will give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he did do that whole switch up in stances on purpose when he hit temper with that left hook. And if that was true, I mean, that's pretty impressive to think about. I don't know if that's something that they planned on doing, something that he came up with on the fly, but that was extremely impressive. I've heard some things here and there that KSI could fight out of both stances. I don't know how true that is. I'm sure he can't fight perfect out of southpaw, but that would be interesting to see in his future fights. How well does he do in southpaw? Now, things he needs to work on, just pure fundamentals. He needs to work on leaving that right hand up. His head movement's also really good, so if he's going to rely on head movement so far, he's doing pretty well, but I think with a guy like Jake Paul, he'll be able to hit him with a check left hook. That is something he needs to specifically work on when fighting Jake Paul. That's why I might honestly pick Jake Paul. I think at this point, he's been boxing for six years. I don't know if he's not going to fix this problem now. I don't know when he's going to fix this thing. And another thing I want to talk about when it comes to KSI is KSI is secretly a really good boxer. I don't know if you guys know this. I don't know if you guys have ever seen him train privately. If There's tons of videos on the internet. Even him sparring at the gym, the guy looks like a different fighter. It's like night and day. And I, like I said, I kind of alluded to this. I think it's the crowd. I think the crowd kind of feeds him up. I think he kind of forgets the game plan and just goes at his opponent, which could work with a lot of these trash cans like Swarms, like Pineda. I think it might not even have worked if FaZe Temper had a longer training camp. But for someone to beat KSI, you're going to have to find someone super composed, someone that's like not afraid of KSI, and someone that's really good with their feet. Because it's going to take someone super, super composed to beat KSI. And I don't know if Jake Paul is so composed. I would pick Jake Paul just because I think he'll be able to find that shot. I don't think he'll be able to knock out Jake Paul. I think he's too young in his career. But who knows, maybe we'd see Jake get hit with a big overhand by Tyron Woodley, a shot that we all know KSI throws a lot. And Tyron Woodley countered Jake when he was trying to throw the check hook, which is something that I said that he should throw against KSI. So it's going to be an interesting fight. But for those of you guys that are going to try to compare Joe Fournier to Tommy Fury, just stop. I'm going to do a video on Joe Fournier if you guys ask enough, and I'll explain to you guys why he is not Tommy Fury. But this is going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching. This is going to be a little bit difficult to edit. So if you guys could just leave a like, comment, and share, and you know, just do the best here. Try to reward me for putting in this hard work because I got to wake up pretty early tomorrow. So this is going to be a bitch to edit. But thank you guys for watching. I know the last Misfits video I did did pretty well. So I thought I'd continue the series. And I'll do a Joe Fournier video if you guys ask enough. There's no UFC this week. So there's really nothing to talk about. I'll do whatever videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one.